So, uh, I know you're here to learn about drop in running shoes, also called an offset. But first, I gotta share some good news with you. Remember this? For everybody out there that, you know, is sending me these really difficult pictures to see uh, the shoes that they're running in. So, here you go. These are three photos I believe that I, I received today. Um, man. And there you have it, right? Pretty tough situation right there in Slovenia. Those were some photos sent to me from a young gentleman in Slovenia who needed desperately some new running shoes. So I can officially say, I believe we, we've completed our first running shoe scholarship. It's amazing. Look what showed up at his door two days ago. That's right, this young gentleman emailed me his story, those challenging, challenging photos with the running shoes, and said, could you help? And then, the power of YouTube and your generosity took over. Another gentleman from Slovenia saw the, the photos from this young man and said, gosh, I can help. I have some extra Nike Pegasus 35s I can send to him in the exact same size that he needed. It's amazing. Ah, oh, it just brings me so much joy uh, and frankly hope like now this gentleman can like can actually go out and run in shoes that don't have three, four, five holes like his toes are not sticking out of the shoes. So anyway, just wanted to share that before we dive into the drop in the shoes. Let's hop in the studio and get this going. All right, here we go. Let's dive into the drop in running shoes. Now remember, I did, I think maybe 10 days ago, I created a vlog all about the different terminology that you should try to learn if you really want to dive more into uh, your running shoe store experience and just being on top of different types of running shoes out there. So if you want to learn more about running shoes, uh, go check it out, upper right hand corner, that card that pops up, click on that and oh man, there's a running shoes are a lot more complex than you might think. And yes, in that vlog, uh, 10 days ago, I wanted so bad to talk about drop in running shoes, but I decided to save it for another day. Well, that day is today, and let's dive in. So, basically, I'm trying to, have to figure out what shoe to grab. I think I'll just grab the Brooks Ghost 11 here. We have to start by asking the question, what, do, what am I talking about when I say, what is the drop or the offset that so the more I would say professional or more common term used in the I would say probably amongst the employees that work at these running shoe companies they probably say offset the more slang term is drop I prefer drop I think it makes more sense and so what running shoe companies do is they measure the stack height so how tall is the heel and then how tall is the cushion below your forefoot and the forefoot is the front of your foot here right below your toes basically where your toes connect to the rest of your foot uh, that is where they measure the stack height of the forefoot and the stack height of the heel and then what they do to figure out the drop is you subtract the number from the forefoot stack height from the heel stack height. And so the stack height of the heel in this Brooks Ghost 11 is 29 millimeters and in the forefoot, 17 millimeters. So 17, 29 minus 17 is 12 millimeters. So therefore this, this Brooks Ghost 11 has a 12 millimeter drop or offset from heel 
to toe. So that is what a drop is or an offset is in a running shoe. And in my entire running shoe collection, the highest running shoe drop that I own is yes, the Brooks Ghost 11 with a 12 millimeter drop. I've never, I've actually never seen a another running shoe that's higher than 12 millimeters. If you know of one, let me know. I'd be curious to hear if there's a, if there's 13 or 14. I'd be fascinated to hear if you know of any. So, and then of course the lowest is always going to be Ultra A L T R A. In case you're not familiar with this company, they only produce and and make zero drop running shoes, which means, uh, for example, in this Ultra Paradigm 4.5. Uh, it's got a 30 millimeter stack height in the heel and a 30 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. So 30 minus 30 is zero. So they are very famous now for a zero drop running shoe design. Now, before we go any further, I do, I just want to mention, I don't know what your stride or your gait cycle looks like or your foot strike, or I don't know your running injury history. So you have to take everything I say with a little bit of a grain of salt. However, I am going to make some recommendations and I was doing some research ahead of time on YouTube before recording this vlog and I couldn't really find anyone that was willing to uh, make a pitch for you should run in three millimeter drop if you want to do this. You should run in 12 millimeter drop if you want to do this. So I'm going to make some recommendations, some ideas for you to consider. Uh, so just putting that out there right now before we go any further. Now, if you've been watching this vlog for a long time, in fact, I think I talked about this yesterday, you know my thesis on zero drop running shoes and that's where we're going to start with this Ultra Paradigm and also what's on my foot right now, the Ultra Torin uh, 3.5. I believe you should use, that's right, really use zero drop shoes for stretching and strengthening your kinetic chain, but especially everything below your knee, your calf muscle, your, however you say this word, that's right, that muscle, uh, your soleus, uh, ligaments, tendons that go all the way down to your heel and then wrap around your fascia tendon down to your toes. Uh, why zero drop running shoes? Why, how do they actually work and stretch and strengthen all of those uh, muscles? Basically, the stack height in the heel is not catching your heel when compared to the stack height in the forefoot. So it's like it's like a, 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 a flat board. Um, whereas in a 10 millimeter shoe, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, if you're in a 10 millimeter, basically your heel is a little higher up in the air and therefore it's taking a, a little bit of the pressure and workload off of all of the muscles and tendons and everything else above your heel. Uh, does that make sense? And if it doesn't, let me know down in the comments. But basically, it's just that ever slightly raise of your heel, whereas in the zero drop, it's boom, it's flat as a pancake, and therefore all everything else above all the other muscles, tendons, and everything else above your heel is getting stretch out, stretched out uh, ever so slightly. You you might not even notice it at first but it is happening. So that is my thesis on zero drop running shoes. Use it for strengthening and stretching your entire kinetic chain. And I like to use them on easy days when I'm just bopping along. Not fast days, we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Okay, now let's go to the other end of the spectrum, high drops in running shoes. So we're talking, I'm gonna say everything above nine millimeter and really above 10 millimeter, because there's not too many shoes out there that fall in the nine millimeter category for their drop. Uh, now let's start, yes, with the Nike lineup. Just so you know, most Nike running shoes, at least on the roads, are 10 millimeter drop, like the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit, uh, the Nike Pegasus 35, the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. All of these three shoes right here are 10 millimeter drop running shoes. And now this might get a little controversial right here and feel free to disagree with me down in the comments. That's why I wanna hear your opinion. I believe if you wanna run fast, especially in longer races, so anything over half marathon, and especially on the roads, you should be doing it in a higher drop running shoe. Why? It's, you know, basically most runners are averaging somewhere in the 40 to 55,000 steps in a marathon race on the roads. Uh, so imagine if you're, remember what we just talked about in the zero drop shoe, in a 10 millimeter drop running shoe, like this Vaporfly 4% Flyknit, basically 
over the course of a marathon where you're taking tens of thousands of steps, just imagine how much more work you're putting into all of the muscles above your heel. Why? So now why is this happening? Basically, when compared to the forefoot, so this is a 32 millimeter stack height in the heel, 22 millimeter in the forefoot. Uh, so therefore, the stack height here in the heel is pretty, it's pretty tall. It is relieving all of those muscles ever so slightly, but relieving the dropping of your heel to the ground. Uh, so it's taking more of the brunt of your stride and your gait cycle and your foot strike. And I believe in order to run faster, uh, to help you run faster, you should be striving to be more of a midfoot or forefoot striking. Now listen, in the marathon, and especially late in a marathon race, you might start to heel strike. Listen, when we get tired, that's usually what starts to happen is we start to land more on our heels. But if you can, if you can remember through your foot strike to land more in the midfoot and forefoot, uh, and then have a taller stack height in the heel, you're not going to be wearing out your calf muscles, especially as much in a longer race. So I hope that made sense. I know that was a lot to absorb, but here's a couple examples I just want to throw out there for us to discuss down in the comments. Here you go. Oh man, here we go. Could Elliot Kipchoge run a 225 marathon like he did in the sub two project in a zero drop running shoe? I would say no. In fact, I think if he tried to run a marathon in a zero drop running shoe, I think it would add at least 90 seconds to his time. I'm not even kidding. Why? Because you're just putting more workload on your calf, your soleus, your entire, it's, it's your hamstrings as well. Um, and at your quads, I'd have to put a little more research and thought process into that, but I'm talking about the muscles in the back of your leg, uh, in your hamstring as well, but especially all of those ligaments and tendons and muscles below your knee. So that's a question to consider. And yes, I'll just say, let's uh, you know start a conversation and maybe a little debate down below. Could Eli Kipchoge break two hours in a zero drop running shoe? Okay, now the next example. Are you ready for this? Uh, Hayden Hawks, uh, aside from Jim Walmsley, who's really the fastest ultra marathon runner in the United States right now, I think the next fastest would arguably have to be Hayden Hawks. Like this guy, along with, I guess, uh, Zach, uh, Zach Miller, but Hayden Hawks is the real deal. And I, th so he just, tra so he's a pro athlete. He used to run for Hoka. Do I have a Hoka shoe here? I actually don't. Oh yeah, here we go. The carbon rocket. He used to run for Hoka, but now he just switched to ultra and he's been doing pretty well but I believe he's running Western States 100 mile race at the end of June out in California. I'm going to be fascinated to see how he stacks up in and how he does in a zero drop running shoe compared to, let's say, a Jim Walmsley who runs for Hoka. So those are two examples to get the ball rolling, get the discussion going down in the comments about drop in running shoes. Okay, and just to recap really quickly, zero drop for easy days, recovery days, stretching and strengthening your lower leg, especially your calf, your soleus, etc., etc. I like preferably six to eight millimeters. That's where I live. That's what I love to run in. That's why I love the New Balance Beacon so much, which is a six millimeter. Uh, so if you can find, I like a daily trainer, a middle distance day. Yes, a long run shoe to be in that six to eight millimeter range. That's, that's, that's a sweet spot for me. And yes, I think that if you want to run fast for longer distances, now cross country and like a, a two mile on the track or a 5K on the track, it's a little different. But we're talking uh, 10K and above or 10 mile and above on the roads, throw on a 10 millimeter shoe. I believe you're gonna run faster because it's gonna help uh, it's going to help your heel from dropping down too much, and it's going to help you get up on your toes a little bit. And yes, you run faster when you're up on your toes, when you're landing uh, preferably at least midfoot and even uh, forefoot if you can pull it off. So that's my that's my recap. That's my opinion. And now I want to hear your opinion. Yes, the question of the day. What is your opinion on the drop in running shoes? Disagree with me. Let me know if you have any other opinions or maybe you do agree with me. Uh, and yes, of course, drop is the keyword for this blog. I hope you learned something. And again, uh, I'm just so grateful that YouTube 
uh, that we're able to communicate here. But more importantly, that we're like communicate and kind of geek out on running shoes. But more importantly, that we're able to get nice running shoes on people's feet that actually need them. This gentleman in Slovenia, once again, he couldn't afford running shoes, a new pair, and now he's got a nice, solid, beautiful pair of running shoes to go pound some ground on uh, in moving forward. All right, that's it, folks. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Oh, man, oh, man. See you tomorrow.